everyone, it's Emily. Welcome to Mama From Scratch. Today I'm going to be sharing with you two small bedroom makeovers on a budget. The first one I'm going to share with you all the little details of the different DIYs I did to make over the room from start to finish. And then the second one you're just going to see the room reveal. Both of the rooms are around the same size but they look completely different and so I hope that you guys will get lots of inspiration from today's video. If you do, make sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. Of course, I will try to have all the products I use linked down in the description box below so you can find them and make over your room as well. And with that, let's go ahead and get started with these bedroom makeovers. So this is what the room looked like before. They had an Ikea bunk bed, but my youngest is getting a little too old for it and so he kept bumping his head, so we needed to change that. So something that I did a few months back was add in some curtains for them, really simple. I got these off of Amazon and they're really nice, they're actually like a blackout without having the blackout material if that makes sense. I picked these um, wooden letters. I had my friend Nikki over at the Carpenter's Farmhouse make these for me. She does custom uh, wood cutouts for you and so I'm going to set these out and paint some of them with um, some black spray paint. You can paint them by hand, obviously I've done that before, but just do whatever works for you. I For the room makeover, I wanted to do an accent wall and I decided to use pill and stick wallpaper. If you've been with me for a while, you know I love this stuff. I got this one from Wonderwall and they have full instructions on how to use it. It's super easy, but something you need to do before you put it up is actually let it relax. So they suggest rolling it out for a little bit and then you can prep your wall and everything while you wait for it to kind of relax. So that's what I'm doing here and removing a couple outlet covers. like a workout like lifting this heavy ladder up the stairs I need a couple things for this project a measuring tape a pencil and a level and then an exacto knife and the squeegee and of course the removable wallpaper the first thing it actually tells you to do is take the width of the wallpaper and take off half an inch and you're going to leave that as extra because no walls are ever plumb let me tell you no walls are plumb so that's what I'm going to do so I'm taking my measurement of 23 and a half and marking it on the wall and then I'm using my level to get a nice straight line all the way down and up the wall. That way my first piece of wallpaper goes on straight and then all the ones after that will go on. The nice thing about Wonder Walls, they actually put tape on the ends where you're supposed to line up the next piece. And then they also do a, um, a uh, basically like a six inch peel off so you can stick that to the wall while you adjust it and this wallpaper actually has a canvas look to it and texture you can order it flat or with a texture and I thought the texture was really awesome so I definitely wanted to use that because again it just adds a little um, extra impact to the room so the first wall as you know walls are not straight and so um, I'm just getting it to the height that I want to get it to and then I'm starting and following that line all the way down the side and I can peel this off the wall and adjust it as I need to. It's very forgiving and it doesn't rip. It's actually a really thick wallpaper and I really like the quality of it. So now that the first piece is on, I'm going to line up my second piece and I'm going to line up the two um, blue tapes together and since this has a pattern you want to make sure that you do it because you will notice if it's off with the floral wallpapers that I've done in the past you can't quite notice if it's slightly off this one you do the lines will not line up properly so I went ahead and just applied that all the way down and then I'll be uh, trimming off the excess here in a minute with with my knife and the squeegee it makes for really simple you basically just make sure it's pressed in and then take your knife go along the edge and it peels right off and I'll do that to the top and also the bottom and then I will just peel off all the blue masking tape as well
So now that the accent wall is complete, I think it looks really good. We're gonna move on to building the beds. This is all the lumber that I am using. Now, if you've been with me for a while, you know that I've made quite a bit of bed frames, and this is no different. I wanted to make my boys' bed frames as well. And I'm actually using plans from Anna White for this, and I am tweaking them a little bit, but it's really nice. If you go to her site, she gives you the cut list for everything, and it just makes it super easy. Here's all the wood that I will be using for this project minus a one by three. I have to have my neighbor cut that down for me, but I'm using four one by sixes and two two by fours for the headboard. Then I have the side rail, which is a one by six, and the two by four, which will hold it. And I have obviously I have two as you need two side rails. And then I have the footboard, which is two by fours with a one by six on it. So that is what I got going on here using wood glue um, one and a fourth one and a half inch nails my brad nailer and then a right angle and a pencil so I'm starting with the headboard first I have my two by fours and I'm marking in two and a fourth inch in from the outside and that I'm gonna take my long board and just score that line all the way down so I use it as a reference that way the headboard uh, slats will measure up to those basically so I'm just repeating that for both of the two by fours and here I am arranging my one by six pine boards and I'm trying to figure out the way I want the design to look uh, I was kind of finicky with the way I wanted the knots to look on it so I just played with it until I got the desired look that I wanted and then um, this is obviously the way it's going to look on the front of it so I'll just flip all those boards over that way when I glue them down you'll see the pretty side so I'm taking my wood glue and I'm going to start working each board at a time I apply the bead of glue make sure everything's lined up where that um, uh, mark is that I put on the 2 by 4s and then I will nail it down. If you don't have a nail gun you can screw them down or you could uh, hammer them in by hand if you like. I will list all my tools in the description box below in case you're interested in the exact ones that I use. But this nail gun, I've had it for a couple of years and I use it for various different projects around the house and it's been a great investment for me. So now that the headboard is all glued and nailed down, this is the way it looks. Now we're going to repeat the same process for the footboard. Now we're moving on to the side bed rails. I'm adding a thick bead of glue onto the 2x4 and then I'm going to put my 1x6 on top of that and make sure it's flush on the one side and then it allows me to have about a 2 inch gap on the top part which is where your bed cleats will end up going so I'm just making sure it's even on all ends and then I'm just going to stagger my nails all the way down. And then I ended up putting a few screws into it as well just for extra support. The only thing I'm missing for the footboard is my 1x3 which I will add later once I can get that cut. But this is what the bed is looking like and now we're going to put it together. I am using 3 inch screws uh, with my impact driver. I do that because it doesn't strip out the screws or anything and it drives really good. I really like it. It's definitely one of those um, tools that I really like having. So for this I was propping it up with other um, shims. But what I should have done was actually turn it upside down because then it would have been completely flush with the ground and I could have screwed it right in. So just keep that in mind. You can do that. Make it easier, especially if you're working by yourself like the way I am. If you want to do it this way, then add some extra legs underneath and screw it together. I'm just taking my nail gun and using a spacer so that way each of the bed cleats is evenly spaced and I actually end up adding one more at the very end of the bed as well so you'll need nine. She uses ten um, but it depends on what size you're using as well. I used one by fours for this which is fine um, but just do what works for you. Once I got that all in then I went around and added 
another nail into each board. And the last step for me was to attach that one by three that I didn't have on hand. And my neighbor cut that for me, which was super nice. And I'm just gluing that down, making sure it's even on both sides. And then I'm gonna nail that all the way in. Now to cover up the screw holes and nail holes, I'm using this plastic wood in natural color and I'm just applying it by hand, squishing it into the hole and I'll let that dry and then once um, it has dried, it doesn't take too long at all, you're going to sand that down so that we have a nice smooth surface. And I didn't do the back of the headboard because nobody's gonna see that, but anything on the side and the front I made sure to do. On this bed, the headboard is supporting the rest of the bed, which is pretty common. But what I decided to do is make this one a platform bed. And the reason I did that is so that way um, I could get it through the door. Now, I have to take this off to get this through the door. Um, it's not that big of a deal, but it's still attached. And I'd rather just have a platform bed and then you can put whatever headboard you want on this. So after I made all those changes, I am going to be going in with some stain. And this is by Verithane. It's called Briar Smoke. I've never used this before, so I wanted to test it out on the back of the bed so I could see if when you use different woods, um, different woods accept stain differently. So it really looked nice on the um, pine boards. It took a certain way. The fur was a little bit more on the reddish tone, but because it didn't use too much of it, you couldn't tell that much, but just be aware of that with your different stain colors that you use. And this one definitely applied a little bit differently. You can do a pre-stain on it. I did not. Um, I thought this worked just fine for me. I am using a rag to apply it, it's just what I prefer, but some people like to use brushes. Again, just use what works best for you and what you prefer. After the stain has dried, I'm going in with this clear matte polyacrylic just to finish it off, and I'm using a sponge brush for this. I like to use that because sometimes the hairy brushes can leave some hairs behind and I don't like that. So I'm gonna do a coat of this, sand it down with really fine grit sandpaper about 300 to 400 and then I'll apply one more coat of the finish just so it's nice and sealed. I decided to leave the headboard separate, that way I can adjust it, and then I can also, you don't need legs on your headboard either if you want to just hang it from the wall, but I will do that later on. I'm just adjusting the beds, figuring out what best works, and the boys were letting me know what they liked and what they didn't like about it, so I was tweaking it to their needs as well. So since the boys are into Pokemon, trucks, Legos, and dinosaurs, I decided to make them a couple um, art pieces with Pokemon on them. Even though they're not really allowed to watch Pokemon because it's a little bit mature, my niece has actually been making them Pokemon characters and drawing them out. She's really talented and she's really into anime and you can just see it reflect in her artwork. And so I'm actually going to hang up those frames on each side of the window in the room when they come in, they just haven't come in yet, and display some of her art pieces. You guys will see it when I reveal the room. And then I decided to add the dinosaurs as well because my youngest is obsessed with them. <laughs>
so I decided to add some extra pillows for the boys because they love to again build forts and make tunnels and things like that and so I got these blue ones off of Amazon they're a nice sweater material and then the geometric ones are actually from Hobby Lobby they're all covers and again I'll leave everything linked down below that way you can get it everything is really affordable and this is what the room looked like before when we first started and this is how it turned out the first bedroom makeover what did you guys think I really love it the boys really enjoy it and I set up their beds that way because they wanted them that way if I would have put the beds on either side of the window they couldn't jump from bed to bed or build forts um, and that's something that they want to be able to do in their room so I tailored it to their needs and I think it turned out absolutely adorable so now let me go ahead and show you my childhood bedroom that my mom has made over for all of the grandsons in the family to sleep over at it's so adorable a lot of the items in there are thrifted, some are from Overstock, and she just pairs so nicely. It's adorable, and I hope you guys will get lots of inspiration from it. So let me go ahead and show you that room makeover now. My mom has a very rustic cabin style home and she kept that with the boys' room as well in here. And she mixed old and new together, lots of thrifted items. All of our childhood books are in here as well as our stuffed animals. The dresser is mine from when I was a kid as well as the twin bed. The artwork goes along with our dog Lily. She's a little black terrier mix and it just fits the room perfectly and I love the way my mom has styled it. She has such an eye for decorating. She's super talented and I'm so glad I could share this room with you all and it's just adorable how everything is mixed in together from my childhood to theirs which is really fun. So I hope you all enjoy these room makeovers today. Let me know which theme you like. If you enjoyed it be sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and if you have any questions let me know in the comments. Everything will be linked down the description box below including more DIY and room makeover videos if you get more inspiration. Thank you all so much for being here. I'll see you in the next one. If you are new, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out.